Hey, welcome everyone to our, well, we try to do it weekly, but sometimes it doesn't work out. I uh, I was ill with COVID for a while, so that kind of threw us back. But uh, all that to say, here we are again, and I'm still kicking. And if you're listening to this, you must be still kicking too, so we can be grateful for that. And today we're going to listen to a very powerful track. It's uh, from Digital Euphoria. And it's track three. It's called Deepest Euphoria. And it is phase synchronous gamma. And if you don't understand that, well, gamma is is very high frequency. And there's also repairing going on around uh, where I live now. So if you're saws and hammers and stuff like that, I will uh, I'll put me on mute when we begin to meditate. But um, yeah, and gamma is is a very uh, it's a very high frequency. It's energetic. It it um, it was originally noted when they were doing um, experiments with uh, Buddhist monks who were doing compassion meditations, and they started seeing this gamma manifesting itself while they were doing this particular uh, meditation that focused on compassion. So since then, it's been talked about as as an aid to compassion. And, uh, well, we'll see about that. But, uh, boy, that is that is hugely important. And it also helps process lots of information. So it's recommended not to do it too many times, maybe three times a week at the most. So here we are. And this is a half-hour track. So sit up straight as you can. Yeah, and just let the weight at your head be centered in your shoulders and your body sink into the earth. Okay, and uh, often when I start a meditation, I like to do a 10 second or a five second in reverse. Five, relax. Four, relax and just feel your jaw muscles are lasting your shoulders your back your whole thing so then you get there and hopefully you'll get to the point which sometimes happens is where you can stop thinking or thinking becomes optional which is really nice it's not like oh i forgot how to think well which is of course thinking you'd be thinking if you thought that but uh it that's a very beautiful place and when we're in that place I think there's all kinds of positive and transformative things that can happen. Uh, Our higher power, deeper self can speak to us. We can be healed. We can let go of stuff. We can fill ourselves with things that need to be filled. There's all kinds of possibilities. But a lot of that is just, um, that's God's work. And our work is just to do the meditations and be faithful to do the best we can. So, um, I guess without further ado, we'll do that, and uh, we'll see you on the uh, the other side. Oh, and, and put your phones on airplane mode and all that stuff so you don't get interrupted. All right.
Well, welcome everyone again. Seems like we go from the outer world to the inner world and back to the outer world and hopefully um, where they're both connected, the inner and outer and in the gospel of uh, Thomas, which was found in the in the Egyptian desert in 1948. There was the Gospel of Thomas, which is not included in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. It's a fantastic book. Uh, it's it might be one of the it might be before Mark. It might be the earliest uh, account of of Jesus, and yeah, doesn't have a lot of stories. Has no miracles, but it's like somebody's following him around and writing stuff down. And in in the other Gospels, it says uh, the kingdom of heaven is within, which those of us who have been on the spiritual path for years could definitely right exactly of course but in thomas he says kingdom of heaven is without and within both places so it's bringing together those dualities of the inner and outer so it seems to be important that we uh we work on both parts of that Anyway, interestingly enough, about 15 minutes into the meditation, my uh, track stopped. So I said, okay, well, what do I do? I can panic and try to get it. I don't know, just pray, dude. I said, oh, of course. And uh, so, yeah, I spent a lot of time uh, praying. And that's what in an in integral speak can Wilbur call the second person connection to God. That's where you're talking to God as other than you and as you know, higher power. And, and uh, yeah, just what I was doing was basically recalling to mind all the people that need 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 God, if you will. I pray for the people that are dying right now, the people that are being born, uh, all of you guys. Just kind of uh, imagine you in my heart and mind. Just get breath out. Send out love and compassion and whatever's, whatever's best, because I certainly don't know what's best each individual generally i know it's best but specifically man it's hard to say so yeah and of course there's the the tibetan buddhist uh practice where you you breathe in the pain of the world and you breathe out loving kindness and uh yeah, so that's what I was doing. And, uh, and I know if, 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 you know, a lot of us have had problems with that type of prayer, you know, for personal God. And uh, I get it because I certainly was there. And I was talking to a friend one time and he said, I don't believe in a personal God. I said, well, this just came to me in a moment. I hadn't been saving this up. And I said, are we being personal right now? Yeah. There you go. Personal is part of God. Because we can do it. So, um, so sometimes when the world seems too much, and when we feel powerless to... To affect anything in a loving way, compassionate, wise way, we can pray. Okay, and that's part of the, the spiritual journey. That second person part of God, where we send out our heart and ask God to touch the hearts and the lives of all those—not just human beings, but every every plant, every tree, every bird every stream, every spring. Bring it all there. 
And when we do that, the inner feeling is that we're actually connecting with something deeper and that it matters. You know, the, the monks, at least the Christian monks who withdraw from the world, not many of those left, there's still a few, didn't think they were leaving the world behind. They thought they were dedicating their lives to the world. And through their meditation and prayer, they're actually making a difference in the world. So, and then there's times when uh, that first person part of spirit is when all separation is God. And there is only God. And we are that and always have been that and always will be that. But in the meantime, we are also this, you know, uh, little Johnny Dupuy, you know, in, in Louisiana, trying to, you know, trying to do the best I can with what I've got. And uh, we're we're uh, we're called to live out that aspect of God, which is our individual self, ego, if you will, which just means self. It doesn't mean self-obsessed or selfish or any of that. It's just the reality of the individual consciousness put into the miracle that is a human being and the miracle that is a cat and a dog and a bird, all of those other things together. But while we're in this body, we're, you know, we're this. And so the idea is to, and if you feel powerless, if you don't know what to do, well, you can pray. You can open your heart up and send out love and kindness. And if you're not feeling love and kindness in yourself, Ask for help. You know, it feels so dark. It feels so discouraging. It seems so overwhelming. Please help me to uh, to do what I can and be what I can be. Gelassenheit uh, said uh, Meister Eckhart. It's a middle German word. It's just like letting it be and letting it come through you. And uh, and maybe all you're called to do in the moment is just to be silent and sit in the openness and the spaciousness. And then maybe you're called to actually prayer and send out love, send out thanks. And when we do that, then we open ourselves to a deeper level of being our individual self which I think matters in a big way. It took the universe 13 point, what, 8 billion years to come up with me, you, and this reality that we've created. And uh, it's way beyond, I feel in a way beyond just an accident that this all came into being. There's too many things that had to perfectly line up that were just a fraction of a fraction of a fraction off. None of this would ever happen. So here we are having a conversation, at least I'm talking about uh, this deeper meaning of what it means to be alive, to be aware, to have an inner practice, and to be concerned about the world that our ancestors built for us and what we're doing now and what those who come after us as individual embodied uh, beings, what we'll leave them with. So do your best. Find a practice that helps you cultivate your deepest self and uh, leave the rest of God and the rest of us. We're here. 
work on this stuff too and you're not alone. So thank you for uh, coming together again and uh, being with us. And I think it matters. And as chaos theory taught us, the smallest thing can often change the whole pattern. You know, and it's not upon us to figure out how what we do will affect the whole pattern. It's on us to make sure we do what we do. And that we uh, have gratitude for, for being alive and being conscious and being embodied in this form. So enough already, okay. Um, all right, we love you guys. Thank you so much. And uh, don't forget to uh, take time out daily. Um, hang out with God, if you will. Uh, he misses us. At least she misses us. Sorry, Heidi. Uh, so anyway, thank you, dear God. And thank you, everybody, for uh, for being here one more time. Let's do it again, God willing.